Okay, this is part two of the uh, section 1.3 geometry homework, uh, geometry lectures rather. All right, well, we're going back to this definition of congruence. Now, I, I briefly uh, brushed over that, but congruence, it's just the word we use to say two things are equivalent. When you're comparing numbers, like if you say 7 equals 7, or something less trivial, 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. We use an equal sign, but when we're comparing segments or even uh, angles or figures or squares or triangles, we don't say, like for instance, if you want to name the segment at the top, that's segment AB, the other segment is CD, but we don't say segment AB equals segment CD because you know numbers are uh, they're, uh, representations of just you know some value, but you might think even even though they're the same length, they're not the same thing. Like this, this segment is a different thing from this segment. So we use congruence when we're comparing two objects. Uh, so they have the same length, but they you know we say they're congruent. Now you can say their measurements are equal. So we use equality when we're talking about their measurements, and their measurements are just they're really just values. They're numbers that can have units on there. So it makes sense to use equality. Uh, but congruent essentially means equal. It's just it's what we use to compare objects as opposed to just numerical values. So if you want to know if AC and BD are congruent, well, AC is only congruent to BD. So I draw my little congruent sign as just a little equal sign with some uh, some whipped cream on top. And uh, we want to compare. We want to see this only happens if you know these these are congruent if their measurements are the same. So we want to know, uh, first of all, we'd have to know their measurements would have to be equal. That would make the segments congruent. So let's compare these two things. So let's look at, at AC. That goes from negative 2 to this looks here uh, to be at 3. So I'm going to do 3 minus negative 2, which gives you 5. So AC is 5. All right, and then BD. So we have here, again, we're at 3 there. And we go all the way to 10. So that's going to be BD, it's uh, going to be 10 minus 7, so which is, I'm sorry, 10 minus 3, which is 7. Since 5 is not equal to 7, that means AC is not congruent to segment, don't forget your bars there, BD. So the answer here would be no, they're not congruent because their measurements aren't equal. Is AB congruent to DE? Well, see, AB. Again, that's uh, we have some of the coordinates labeled there. So uh, we're going from negative two for a b. We're going from negative two to uh, positive three. So that's going to be three minus negative two is the length of a b, which gives you five. All right, and then we have d e is um, going to be fourteen minus ten. That's going to be 4, and again, 5 is not equal to 4, so we would say no, these are these two segments uh, are not congruent. All right, so when we talk about, cover a couple more definitions, midpoint, all right, I'm going to insult you here. Uh, this is the point in the middle. Now, that's not the textbook definition, but I mean, it's obvious. If you had to define midpoint, I'd want you to say, is the point in the middle. And, you know, it's, it's, it's the point in the in the center, you might say too, but uh, you know, middle. When we're talking about, we say we have a a segment. Okay, now I know I draw the line here, but let's say uh, you have a point A and you have a point P. All right, and let's say you have a point Z in the middle. All right, that would mean that it's you know in be directly in between these two in the the center position of these two, which would also make uh, if that happened, if Z is a midpoint. It would also make these congruent, and by the way, we indicate that with little like marks here. Those are congruence marks. So if ever you see, for instance, like a uh, equilateral triangle, in geometry, we'll do this to say, uh, we'll put like one little uh, mark on each of them to say this, this, and this. All these sides are the same. If we draw a square, we'll do you know on all four, and you know we'll even put a right angle there to indicate that the right angles. You really only need one little right angle. Um, or it's like, say you want to do a rectangle, right? Where they're not all the same, but some of them are the same. Well, uh, this top and this bottom are the same, but you wouldn't want to put a mark on the left and the right ones because the top and the bottom are long. So, but we, we do want to say that the top and the bottom are the same, the left and the right are the same. So you put the, actually put two marks on those. 
And you know, you, you, if you wanted to have three separate pairs, you could have you know, as many marks as you want. Um, now, bisect that just means that's just a vocab word. It means cut in half. And so, a segment bisector, it's really just something that uh, a segment bisector is anything, and it could be a ray. That's so. We, let's let's draw a little segment here. Uh, we got our uh, segment here. Let's call it segment uh, uh, D M. Right? You know, so I like to I like to stay away from just doing A and B. I don't know why, uh, but like some variation in the letters. So uh, maybe I should like eat some alphabet soup to inspire me uh, when I'm making these videos. So D M. Let's say the midpoint of uh, D M is uh, let's say it's you know some point Q. Well, you could have a ray. That goes through there, and that could be a segment bisector. You could have a another segment, right? That goes through there, so it could be a ray, it could be a segment. Uh, um, the midpoint itself could be the segment bisector. So the point Q bisects segment DM. It could be a point, or it could even be a line. Any figure, um, any of these could be a segment bisector, and these are uh, objects that uh, bisect, which uh, we really mean cut in half. They bisect a segment, and what that really means is they they go through the midpoint of that segment. So, um, you know, like your your, your midpoint itself it ex exists, of course, at the midpoint. So it's going to bisect that segment here. All right, so Q is the midpoint of PR. Let's use the definition midpoint, point in the middle. All right, we want to know what our PQ, that's this right here, and uh, what our QR, and then once we find those, we can find the measurement of PR. Now, here's the thing. The problem is we're just given these unknown expressions. All we're given is this is a really important piece of information. Q is the midpoint. It's the point in the middle. Well, if this is in the middle of this segment, it means... It separates these two into equal segments. So what can you say about these two expressions here? Well, these two things are equal. So you, it's it's good to note that these are equal to each other. Well, so what? So those are equal to each other. Well, if they're equal expressions, then you could solve for x, and you could move your variables to one side, and then move your constants to the other side. So we'd have that uh, 1x is equal to, these cancel out here and here is equal to 8, so x is 8. So, all right, PQ, would that be 8? No, careful, that's what x is. That just tells you what x is. Now, PQ, this expression, depends on what 8 is. So if I want to solve for PQ, I know PQ is 6x minus 7. Well, that means it's 6 times x is 8 minus 7, so I get 48 minus 7, so 41. Now, I'm going to plug it into QR as well. Because I want to check this, you might think, well, why should I plug that in? I know that if this midpoint cuts this segment in half, whatever this is, if this is 41, this should also be 41. But it's a good idea to check that to see that you did your math right. And if you get the same answer, you should be good. So that's 5 times 8 plus 1. 8 times 5 is 40 plus 1. 41. All right, check. And then if you want to find PR, which is the, the whole enchilada here. So QR, QR is 41. PR is, of course, also 41. And then that would mean that P, uh, I'm sorry, PQ is what this is. And then that would mean that PR would have to be the sum of those. PR would be 82. So notice how this isn't an answer we're looking for. So I'm going to take the box away from that. But it's an important piece of information. But it's not any of the answers we want are these three things right here, which check out. All right. Again, we'll use a similar type of problem. We have that we're given a midpoint. All right, we're saying that use the midpoint. We want to find these things. Again, you would just set them equal to each other, and then you would solve for x, knowing that this bisects these two, and you could just follow through with that. All right, so just a little bit of review. All right, the point on, how do we say this? That's not a line, that's a ray, ray da. Now, but you got to be careful how we draw it. So you might think, oh, ray, it's pointing to the right. So is it D? Oh, wait, there's no A there. But you are supposed to start at D and head toward A. So ray DA would be this ray right here. It goes on, starts at D, goes on forever in the A direction. All right, we want a, the point on DA that is two units from D. So start at D, go two units away. That would be the point B. 
We want to know two points that are three units for D. Well, how can there be two? See, one, two, three, I see that direction. So that's the, remember, I want the point, right? Because you, the coordinate is where it's at. The point is the, you know, the name of it, the label of it. So there's A, and then there's also, um, you know, if I go three units in this direction, there's G. And uh, I just separate them with a comma. You can put A and G, but you don't want to put AG like that because I read that as the the measurement of segment AG. So you do want to at least separate them with a comma or the word and. I want the coordinate of the midpoint of AG. All right, so here's A, here's G. Now that one's pretty easy because all right, well between negative three and three perfectly has to be zero. And if you want, you can even count all right one over one over another over another over. And one more, one more. So it's going to be the core. Now they say the coordinate. I know it's at wherever D is, but that is at the coordinate zero. So you'd want to put you want to put the number. The coordinate is what they're asking for. All right. They want to know a segment congruent to AC. Well, let's see. AC. I want to know something set congruent to AC. Well, that means I have to find out how long AC is. AC is two units long. Now this is a very open-ended question. You could name any segment two units long. How about uh, EG? All right, what am I missing? They want the segment. Remember, segment has a bar over. You could say EG. You could say uh, DF. There's a lot of uh, answers to that. Okay. Um, some review in the voc vocabulary. You want to know the segment, some, name some segment bisectors of uh, the segment uh, PR. So we could say that, um, for instance, we could say uh, L, which really is understood to be read as, you're going to read this as, Line L is how you read that, but we just have to put the letter, and that's that's uh that's just fine. And th now they want us to name two here. So what? How can we name another uh, bisector of segment? Now PR is here, and we know because of the coordinates that Q is a midpoint there. Well, you could also say the midpoint itself is going to be a segment bisector. So, and I would just put the point Q, and I read that as um, really. I would honestly just read it as as Q. But we understand it at least as point Q, um, and it's it's funny. Whenever I say point Q, does anybody else think this like point Q? Like this is point A. Every time I say point Q, I, I think this. Or if I say point A, you know I see this. But it's it's just I'm just trying to drive home that oh these are points. This is the point P. This is the point Q R S T. Which is why it, it sounds kind of weird when you when you I, I just keep picturing that and I can't help it. But anyways. That's the end of this part of the lecture. Yeah! The views and opinions expressed in this video are solely those of Mr. Vogel and not necessarily reflect those of the school's Secret Heart. If I could tell us, both of the lectures, administration, and the Secret Heart schools, or anyone else, visit our website at sshcoto.org.